Um, hello, everyone. Uh, first of all, I want to thank uh, the committee for the invitation to participate in this very interesting meeting. Uh, I have to say that I am a clinical neuropsychologist and professor of psychology at the University of Cadiz in Spain. My main areas of research are cognitive deficits in neurological conditions like dementia and others. And I also do research uh, in human space flight uh, simulations and space analogs. We are right now in a, in a NASA project and we have done other collaborations in the past in different uh, experiments like Mars 500. But uh, I always uh, like it and was very interested in the SETI topic and especially in the psychological aspect of, of SETI. And in the past few months, we have seen different uh, um, events or objects and a big uh, scientific debate and in the general public about these objects, the Umamua, Tabi Star, uh, repetitive radio birds. So some people say there could be um, not uh, uh, artificial, being as artificial, others say that they are natural, but there is something in common for all of them is the human behind at the end of the chain, making the interpretation, uh, analyze, uh, analyzing the data. And this is uh, thanks to years of evolution and thanks to our brain. However, the brain has uh, uh, its rules. Uh, it has uh, different processes. And uh, basically what he does is that uh, we construct the reality we make the, our own movie of the reality and our lives. And we know this because think, thanks to the neuroimaging, uh, we can see now inside the brain, we can see the brain when uh, it's uh, doing different uh, cognitive stuff. And this is a, a very interesting opportunity to see how the brain works. We can see here the um, spectrum where we live uh, we know that different uh, animals have. Uh, sorry, are you listening, my dog? Hello. Yes, we can hear your dog. <laughs> oh, mm, uh, okay. Sorry, it's okay. Um, <laughs> okay, so um, one moment. Please. Okay, I was saying that there are. Um, very um, important processes at the cognitive level that uh, help us understand the reality. And one example of this could be the bottom-up and the top-down processing. The bottom-up processing relies on properties of stimulus and patterns. And uh, top-down processing relies on higher level of information, such as uh, prior knowledge and experience. Um, this is uh, what makes uh, our reality. For instance, in this image, if I ask you what you see there, maybe you can see only uh, stains, black and white, but maybe you can see a dog. Okay, once, once you see a dog, uh, probably you're gonna keep uh, seeing the dog uh, forever. Another example here, you can see a rat maybe, or maybe you can see a, an old man's face. Uh, once I tell you that you can see these two things, maybe what you are doing right now is alternating between both images because it's creating a conflict in your perception. And this one, another example, if I ask you um, uh, square B and square A, which one is uh, darker, you're going to say A when the reality is that both are the same color. Uh, this is another trick of our brain. And things can get uh, more, even more complex, like uh, in quantum mechanics and the possible role of the observer. And uh, this is another experiment very interesting for us that is called the inattentional blindness. It was an uh, experiment from Simon and Chabri, psychologists from the 90s. And they, uh, they did this experiment uh, where you have to count passes of the guys with the white shirt. And then suddenly a guy with a gorilla custom crossover and um, and half of the people didn't detect the, this gorilla. 
there is a second version that I'm not going to talk about, but I leave you there the the YouTube video so you can you can see it with yourself. It's right. very interesting uh, because things uh, get uh, more complicated. So uh, after knowing this, we decided to apply this for a possible detection of a techno signature. What happens? when we are confronted to the uh, cognitive dissonance of a possible uh, unknown uh, structure or whatever we may find in the future. So we use for this purpose a very interesting image in the uh, uh, series, okay? Uh, the Okator creator, this was a region very popular because of the bright spot. Uh, People were talking about this, uh, they could be city lights, uh, et cetera. Even NASA made their own online survey asking the people what they think this could be. And, uh, well, uh, finally we, we have the explanation that this could be a salt of some type reflecting a lot of light. And uh, this is the, the region we want to focus want to focus on. This is the Vinalia Faculae in the Ocator Crater. Here we found a very interesting uh, feature. It's this one. Okay. Why we choose uh, this one? Because we were asking some colleagues and people and they told us that they, they, they were seeing there some queer uh, geometric uh, feature. So we decided uh, first uh, ask to NASA about this image, what their opinion was about this. These are the three images we have from this region in series. This one, 2016, 385 kilometers high. Then we have this one. This one is the one we use in the experiment, 385 plus 34 kilometers high, because it's a mosaic, a composition of the two images. And this one is the last one they published in the gallery. 2018, July 31st, at 58 kilometers. This is the down probe, but uh, we sent like six, seven emails to NASA team and we get no answer. But we knew that some European colleagues were working in this mission too. Uh, some people at the Max Planck Institute, they were working in the framing camera, so it was perfect. Uh, we contacted them. This is the camera, okay. We contacted them, we talked to them, and we asked uh, what they think this could be. They told us that uh, they didn't notice that formation, but uh, they told us that they were, uh, they did some research on a couple of features they found in cities uh, as possible or artificial, but uh, they were discovered. So yeah, it was something strange, so we decided we're gonna ask the people what they think. But not only the people, we're gonna ask also a machine because we want to be free of possible uh, cognitive bias of, of the humans, uh, the top-down processes. So we wanted to compare both. For this purpose, we used a computer vision model. It's uh, very popular in uh, detection on, of images and in psychology too. Uh, the little money we have, uh, we pay a company to develop a computer vision, simple computer vision model to detect triangles and squares in satellite imaging. We told them that we were interested in for a military purpose for detection of uh, possible uh, enemy structures and whatever. So these are the results for the humans, okay? When uh, humans look at this image, these are the most frequent patterns they see in this image. The most frequently seen is the number one. Obviously, this is artificial because it's a, a problem uh, in the imaging processing of the probe, of the down probe. But then they also detected uh, circles like the number three, uh, the square, okay? And the triangle, this triangle here, maybe you can see a triangle here. First 
trial, only 11% of the people detected this triangle. When we show the triangle to the people, we prime the subjects, they change their mind and 62% of the people start seeing the triangle and they say, oh, I didn't realize that could be a triangle, now I see it, okay? So we say, okay, we found the philosophical stone. That's very interesting, top-down processes, of course. So we asked the machine, and the machine was a surprise because for the same image we use with the humans, it detected square 86% and triangle 52. So we show the machine the other two images of the same region, and the percentage remain similar. So what happened here? Well, one explanation could be top-down processing affecting the perception. Uh, we're putting things there. Uh, I don't know, that's a possibility, but uh, what is more interesting is that uh, maybe this is happening also to the machine learning and to the, to the computer, to the machine. So uh, can we trust these uh, models? Are they gonna have the same errors that humans does? Uh, I read a paper last week where neural networks were getting benefits from sleeping when they're working, so like humans. So I think we have to be careful with these with this, uh, models. Another possibility is, uh, or explanation is that we're having a cosmic gorilla effect. This means that we're focused on detecting uh, certain types of signals but we're missing the gorilla in the room. That could happen too. I know that uh, everyone would like to take the selfie with the tension sure, but the reality is the silence is uh, right now persisting. We put three possible reasons for this. Wrong technological approach. I think this is changing too. We're open to scope. Uh, reason two, this is the most interesting for me. Uh, it could be related to an awareness or psycho, psychobiological limitations, and third one could be the nature and intentions of the other part. But we have to keep in mind that we may be missing the gorilla in the room, and this may happen not far away, but nearby. So I think we have to be open to all possibilities. <laughs> I'm gonna finish with this other image. If I ask you what you see there, most uh, probably you're gonna tell me you see two lovers, but there's also nine dolphins. Children can only see dolphins. And this is maybe similar to what happened to us in the look for ten signatures. Maybe we don't have yet the development uh, needed to be able to detect, to understand this type of signals. When we get uh, cosmic consciousness, this is a very interesting and nice book from Maurice Bach. But the other factors that we, I put here in my last uh, slide, like uh, we have to be careful with the inattentional blindness uh, effect. We have to be careful with cognitive bias and observer factors. Maybe personality traits and brain differences group have something to say here. Yes, I would like to study your brain and your personality traits because we know there are differences in these personality traits, uh, even in the brain, detecting this type of uh, anomalies in perception. For instance, ADHD children, they detect the gorilla more frequently than normal healthy children. And we need to combine all and new approaches, everything, because maybe we are experiencing an implicit learning. This means that we are not aware yet, but we, we will be, and all what we have done, we make sense in the future once we get the cosmic, cosmic consciousness. Meanwhile, we may be those uncontacted people, but that doesn't mean somebody is watching. So we have to wait until we're able to see the lovers. And this is my presentation.